Hey y'all, so I am excited to finally show you the almost completed front yard. I want to just walk through, uh, explain the process, explain what we changed up here, explain the plants, and then you can also see behind me that the windows are all taped up. So I tried to get this video done prior to all of this work starting. I know in a previous video I mentioned that we were going to be repainting in the spring. However, our painter who did our kitchen, who we trust and he is very, very good. And he said that he could get to it uh, before the weather got too cold. And so we went ahead and said, why not? We might as well do it. Let's just do it now, get it knocked out. And then we won't have anything to do in the spring other than some minor cosmetic things on the inside. And then obviously the planting of the flower beds in the back. So let me just turn around here and I will show you what the front looks like. We're not 100% done with it. There's just some perennials that I haven't been able to find thus far and I'm just not willing to budge on those plants because I want there to be some uniformity between this side over here and this side over here at least as much as possible. So let me just turn around here and I will show you the front yard. I'll also talk to you uh, about the windows because I did, they have to take all of the storm windows off to obviously paint the windows. The windows and the panes were actually a different color than the trim. And so we are going to go all the same color. We wanted everything to match and just not have two different two-tone colors. And so we're going all one color and they took the storm windows off and the storm windows will be painted as well because the storm windows are aluminum, which is something that you can no longer do here in the neighborhood. You can have storm windows, but they have to be approved by historic preservation and they have to be wood. These are grandfathered in because they are older. And let me tell you, our old house did not have storm windows and the windows here are single pane glass, wood, single pane glass, and you cannot change out your windows because again, we are in a historic preservation area. So these windows that you see on our house are original to the house themselves. And even if you do need a window replaced, you have to get a replica, a wood replica. Uh, and that also has to go through historic preservation, which I would never ever change any of the original windows, but the, addition of the storm windows make a huge difference as far as draftiness and things like that. So we would never take those storm windows off. So we wanted to paint them to make them seem less noticeable per se. A lot of people have mentioned, you know, I really don't like the screens on the storm windows. And while we could take those off, it would be a pain. Our second story is really pretty high up there and even higher on that side of the house. So it's just a pain to take the screens off and put them back on because we do actually use them. We open our windows quite often and the screens are very, very beneficial. And I can't remember, I'll have to count, but we have a lot of windows. So changing out the storm windows to some newer, maybe a little more sleek windows would cost a fortune. So we are just going to work with what we have, but let me just turn around. I'll show you the windows really quick and then we'll get to the front yard. Okay, so you can see here what I'm talking about when I'm referring to the two-tone. So the trim is kind of a dark black color and then the windows, the interior is more of a gray color and we just want it all to match. So initially we had discussed maybe just painting the trim and not the windows because obviously the windows are where the work is at. You can see how much work that they just did to tape these off. And, but you know, we just thought if we're gonna do it, we might as well do it and do it right. So those are the original windows to this house. And the really cool thing is, let me see, I think they're all taped on the bottom, but all of these lines also will be coming off. We're going to get those removed. So you can see up there, 
It's really pretty without the storm windows on there, but it's just not functional. Um, I wish there was a better solution as far as storm windows go, but when you live in an old house, a 1932 house that has single pane windows, and you came from a 1938 house that had single pane windows with no storm windows, you really, really appreciate the storm windows. It also keeps everything a lot more quiet inside. But I really wanted to film this video without all of this going on, but it just didn't happen. So in the background, you're just gonna have to ignore the taped up windows and look mostly at the landscape. Okay, so for those of you that may have not watched previous videos, this edging, we put in all of this hardscape. So the edging, the boulders, the edging, for those that will ask, is court and steel edging. We put a lot of water wise plants in here and I really wanted to film uh, these sedum. These are Mr. Goodbud sedum. Let me see. They look red. They just finished blooming. So they look red, but you can see right there where that butterfly is. This is the color of them when they bloom. So it's a really pretty pink color. And that is going to kind of be the theme for this area. I want swaths of pink all throughout. This is a Nemorosa Rose Salvia, and it's a really pretty pinkish purple color. And these things, since I put them in, so I bought, I think six or seven of them, and that's all they had. I will be adding a lot more of those in the spring but they have been blooming their heads off. Um, I've deadheaded a couple times since I put them in and they are blooming their heads off. And so this all is obviously going to have to grow in size. You can see there's obviously lots of space throughout the front flower bed, but the Mexican feather grass, which you see right here, that will get pretty large and will fill in a lot of the void. The sedum will also get a bit wider, not much taller. That is a big reason why I picked the Mr. Goodbud sedum. And it was strictly because it didn't get super tall and leggy. And then there's a lot of other salvia, like this is Mayonite salvia. So it's more of a true purple, what a lot of people would call blue. And then we rearranged a lot of these boxwoods. So I wanted boxwoods that were kind of doubled up and up here you'll see some of them are tripled up actually. And I want to just form them into like one kind of mound, if you will. And so that's what I'll be going for on these. I did not prune any of these and we just transplanted them. I'm gonna let them totally get established until next spring. And then at that point, I will be deadheading. I'm not deadheading, excuse me, pruning them. So a lot of people also ask about this hedge right here. Why are you leaving that? It doesn't look very good. And what is hard to see on some of these videos is the elevation that this massive oak provides the front yard. So when it rains really hard, we get a lot of wash off and this keeps a lot of that from going into our neighbor's driveway. If it were me, I wouldn't want to have a lot of dirt and debris in my driveway after it rained every time. So that is why we left that. And I actually added more here to keep everything from washing out. And then lamb's ear. Lamb's ear is one of my favorite, this is Helen Von Stein. This will get pretty large and it will spread. It will also, I even hesitate to say semi evergreen here because really it stays pretty green for me um, all year. I'll come out and prune it up just a little bit, get some of the tattered leaves off, but otherwise it's a very low maintenance plant and it's one of my favorites. So we can't obviously plant too close to there. We have 
the, the water main there. There is a drain right there. And then that rock sits on the sprinkler box valve. So there's a lot of stuff going on right there in that general area. So we couldn't plant too much there. Uh, I have some Veronica. Let me see if I can get pretty close here. It's kind of almost done blooming and it looks like a squirrel has been at it over here. Um, but that is, gosh, I will, I will add the name to that. I can't remember exactly what variety of Veronica that is. I looked for a lot of pink Veronicas and hardly anybody had Veronica in that color. So they, they all had the purples and the blues and the whites, but nobody really had the pink. So I'll be on the search for those. Um, here, the dwarf bunny grass. So something that I wanted a lot of in this front yard was grasses. Some ornamental grasses that didn't get too large. You can see here how I kind of have like a pattern. It comes up and it comes over down there and it kind of, it's a swath of Mexican feather grass. I wanted to flank some of these rocks with this dwarf bunny grass because it's not gonna get a ton bigger than that. And it has a lot of pretty seed heads on it. And I wanted a lot of those flanking the rocks. So actually those were very hard to find as well locally, but ended up finding them at Markham's Nursery. So him being over by the U's reminds me that that specific variety of U is what will be going right here. I've had a very hard time finding that. And also I don't want to have a huge, I found it in really large three gallon containers. And I really just don't want that because this tree right here has just a ton of roots that run throughout here. And I'm trying to disturb those as least as possible. So if I end up having to do the three gallon ones, I will in the spring when we plant the backyard stuff. But until then, I'm going to hang around just a little bit longer, try to be patient and wait and see if I can find some one gallons for here. And I'll probably plant maybe one, two, three there. And you can also see, let me come over here actually, we added some numbers. So that does have landscape lighting on it and we centered it up. Well, it's hard to see here. Some of these boxwoods over here that are in front of these numbers are actually going to come out. I just really didn't know where I wanted to put them and I thought I might use them in the back. So I decided to go ahead and leave those instead of transplanting and then turning around and transplanting them again. Um, they'll probably just be transplanted once we get started on the back. And I need some more things right here, but we'll get into that here in just a minute. So I really debated on transplanting these hellebores. So these are white hellebores, and then there's some double hellebores that I planted. I'm not sure of the variety of the white ones. They were already here, but I'm going to give these a chance uh, because I did plant some little lime hydrangeas. You can see them all through there. And those get three to five feet high. I got that variety specifically because I like the lime green that the blooms are. I know they fade a little bit, but in my experience, I've had a little lime fade to a slighter pink color and not so much of a red color. So I'm going to provide these hellebores hopefully a little bit of shade with the little lime hydrangeas and we'll see if that gives them enough shade again we also got a couple extra sprinkler zones put up here so that could help it out quite a bit as well this space right here kind of this general area gets very hot straight overhead sun because we just lack many trees right here not a lot of branches there it's just kind of a wide open space so we're gonna give those a chance and see how those do you can see here that I have uh, three boxwoods together I wanted 
it to kind of look cohesive from all angles. So here's three here, there's two here, there's one right here. And this was one of the boxwoods that was planted right next to another boxwood. It's like, it's kind of like they were planted together to create one to get it just a little bit bigger, a little bit faster. And so I plan on getting another smaller boxwood for there and it will eventually fill out and round out on the back and we'll just continue to prune it until we get it the shape that we want it. This area right here is also in question. I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to plant right there, but you'll see a lot of Russian sage throughout. It has grown a lot since I planted it. This, this yard gets deceiving amount of sun, even with the three pretty large trees that we have in the front yard. This gets a lot of morning sun and then we'll get afternoon sun that comes in from a different direction. So most of the time, even though these are right under a tree, they are getting four to six hours of sun. Now, I understand that that will change as these tree trees continue to grow, but that's just part of gardening. And so we will adjust as necessary. And, you know, next spring, my goal will be that spot right over there that I just showed you and this area right here. So overall, pretty pleased with it. And this is also cat mint right here. So it is a pink cat mint that I didn't even know that they made. So when I went to the nursery and saw this, I forget the exact stats on this. And again, I will have to look up the name. I can't remember right off the top of my head what exact variety it is. So I will put that in the description that way you know and then there are so this is funny I got a lot of pink echinacea so you can see the echinacea right here you can also see that that's not pink so when the wholesaler delivered the echinacea it wasn't blooming this is the first echinacea that has bloomed and there's two small blooms even coming off the side of it as we speak and neither of them look purple or pink so that should be interesting because i planted a lot of echinacea but if it's white that's that's okay i'm good with that so it it appears to be white the first the first bloom kind of appears to be a creamish whitish so uh we're gonna roll with it if it's white. And you can see here how I did plant a lot of back planting behind the rocks and things like that. Um, the little live hydrangeas minus this one, this one does have some green growth. So I looked all over the place for some little lime hydrangeas and I had a really hard time finding them and I needed them in bulk and so I didn't want to go to the nursery so the wholesale nursery did end up getting some they didn't look fabulous uh, but you can see that there's some new growth this one's struggling a little bit more than some of the other ones but they are putting on new growth so I have high hopes for them in the spring and again some more hellebores there and I really love this pink muley grass. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon right now. It does get a lot of afternoon sun. So I wanted to plant some things over here that were pretty drought tolerant and pretty to look at as well. And again, going with the grass theme. These over here, I'm really hoping they put on a lot more pink like this one because I can see like small hints of pink in, in both of them but this one is much more pink and it doesn't get much more sun than the other two. So I'm really hoping these, this one and then these two over here aren't from separate growers that are going to be a lot less pink. So we'll see, you can see here, like they're really starting to put on a little more pink, but thus far they, they really haven't. And some of this growth up here is just totally white with no pink in it at all and they do 
make white muley grass. So um, I'm just hoping that those turn more pink. We will see, not the end of the world. What else? So actually what else is, see if you can see all of these wasps that are flying up around in these hollies. So we had a, a pretty big wasp nest that was at the very tip of that peak and our pest control people and um, neither the pest control people or us had a ladder high enough to get those off. Well, when they power washed the house last week to start the painting process, we disturbed that nest and I guess they're gonna try to make a new nest in the holly. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. Um, obviously, planted a lot of white pansies. The tulip bulbs, I have 900 tulip bulbs coming and they are scheduled to be here at the end of this week. So I never plant until the end of November. Like right now it's 70 degrees and it's sunny outside. It's a beautiful day. And so I just prefer to plant at the end of November. I could have already done it, but I just prefer to wait because sometimes our weather can be so funky. Um, let's see. So the Pearl Glam Beautyberry. Those are doing fantastic and they have put on a ton of growth. A lot of people had said, good luck with these. I haven't had much luck. They're kind of difficult, but these have put on a ton of new growth and you can see here some of that purple veining that's already starting to show in their leaves that they do get full sun and they have a beautiful like purple pinkish berry and so i'm hoping that these do really well when i got them i actually ordered them online and you never kind of know what to expect as far as you know the health of the plant when when you order it online and what it's going to look like when it actually gets here and they were a little bit beat up so i planted one two and then there's a third one right here. So they do get pretty large. They get like three to five feet tall and wide. So it'll kind of just create a hedge a little bit on this side of the driveway. But I'm hoping that they do really good because they've put on a ton of growth so far. Like I said, they looked a little bit beat up when I received them in the mail. I almost immediately got them into the ground and they've put on just a ton of new growth. But I liked the Pearl Glam variety obviously just for the color and then up here we have wormwood artemisia i grew that at our last house in fact a lot of these plants i grew at our last house and i really really like them they're they're great performers in our zone seven and they're drought tolerant they can they can take some hedging these will get pretty large if i allow them to um, in fact, I think down at our other house, I drove by earlier and I was like, dang, those are probably about three feet high and probably three feet wide. So I used to cut those back hard every spring and I really liked the touch of blue that it brings in there. But I really, you know, I'm going for a more simplified landscape just because this, these flower beds are a lot. There is a lot of planting room in these flower beds. They're very large. And I wanted I wanted to be able to take care of it with a sprinkler system when we're out of town and not burden someone with coming over here and watering for us. Because when you need someone to come over and water, it's typically the middle of the summer. And I don't like to ask people to do that because I don't even like to do that in the middle of the summer in my own yard. And so, Again, we work full-time. Tommy and I both work full-time as well. And we just had a lot of success with this combination of plants at our last house. And so we are going to give it a shot here as well. And I think it will do just perfect. This is another Artemisia here. And hopefully come spring, it will look amazing with all of the tulips. I'll give you a hint, all of the tulips are the same color. There's three different varieties, but they're all the same color. The leaves are starting to drop here too, so 
it's about to get really messy really quick there's so many large mature trees in our neighborhood that uh, if you don't stay somewhat on the leaves I know a lot of people love to leave leaves in their flower beds because a lot of um, beneficial insects and things like that they lay eggs they take shelter in those leaves but we will have leaves piled if we don't address the leaves so give you a look down the street here you can just see the amount of leaves I mean So Tommy stays on top of the leaves and then it's kind of easier to stay on top of them as we go instead of just waiting all at one time to clean up the leaves. So he does that typically on a weekly basis. Uh, so anyways, this is the tour of the front yard as it is currently. A few minor tweaks, uh, some additions come springtime. I'm really bummed that the Mr. Goodbud sedum is looking more red. It typically, as I showed you earlier, is more of that pink color right there. And they look really good together. So I thought they were really pretty when they were both blooming in unison, but I do have some Autumn Joy sedum too that I transplanted because if you remember there was a big patch right on the other side of this big boxwood of autumn joy sedum it got really really leggy so I cut it back hard and I transplanted it one is right there and you can already see it starting to bloom and I transplanted it in a couple other different spots and it is just already blooming sedum is such a tough plant if you don't grow sedum I would suggest getting some and trying it out in your own garden because it's just that good just make sure that you get a variety that comes in a lot of different varieties so make sure you get a variety that you're okay with the height and the color of the bloom so some of them are a little bit more red I prefer the pink ones but and the last thing here so I am going to be putting more here. You can see I have some grasses. These grasses are pretty much at their mature size. They're really wispy. Uh, some of them are hard to see, some of them are in the shade, but it just gives a little bit of extra texture back there to that wall without completely covering it up. I will be planting some lower evergreens. I don't know if I will go with boxwoods or if I will go with some yews to kind of tie in these yews when I get them and those use and I like the texture of use and they are a little bit of a deeper green typically so I probably will get some use to go back along there and some of these are a little bit hard to see but limelight hydrangea one two three four will we decided to put those numbers there after we'd already planted this limelight hydrangea so that one will probably have to move just a little bit but that will happen during the spring. We were initially going to put the numbers right over here. So it's really hard when people are driving in our neighborhood, it's pretty dark at night and it's really hard for them to see. Uh, a lot of people don't have numbers on their house and so it's hard for them to really tell where they're at. And it's even more confusing at our house because we have this front door and we have this front door. And so if we have something delivered, you never know where FedEx or DoorDash or anybody is going to deliver it. They get confused on the doors, but at least now they know that it is actually the right address. And so most people have their numbers down on the curb and we just didn't really want that. We wanted something that was a little more apparent. And so we decided to put them there at the last minute. We, I wanted these boxwoods right here to match those over there. And so the numbers aren't exactly where we initially planned them, but there is a landscape light on them. And now it's very obvious where our house is to people who are delivering things. But that is all that I have for you guys today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. I should also point out that you can see here, the edging is really starting to patina. Um, 
I've let it patina naturally, but you can use a solution that patinas it almost instantly. I just chose not to, I just let it go and it will eventually all rust and it will blend in with the landscape as well as the color of the bricks on the house. And it will almost be like it's not even there. And it's, it's really been a lifesaver as far as some of the washouts. So we really used to have to get after some of the turf right along the edging uh, with the blower and kind of sweep some of that dirt that had ran off during heavy rains. And we just really got tired of doing that. So this edging was the perfect solution for that. And again, we had it in our other house. It's very pretty, it's durable, it lasts a long time. So we are glad that we did that. But that is all that I have. I hope you guys enjoyed it so much. If you wouldn't mind, I would love it if you would hit the like and subscribe button. Have a great rest of your day.